Today we're going to be making French macarons with a Bailey's chocolate ganache. This is perfect for St. Patrick's Day. First, let's start with our ganache filling. We want 115 grams of dark chocolate chips and 35 grams of whipping cream. We're going to put this in the microwave for 40 seconds. Once it's out of the microwave, mix the chocolate and the whipping cream together until it's well combined. Now let's add 20 grams of Bailey's Irish cream. I'm going to start by pouring just a small portion into our chocolate ganache mixture and I'm going to stir until the Irish cream is well combined. I'll continue pouring small amounts until we get all of the Bailey's Irish cream combined in with the ganache. Once we have all the Irish cream combined in with the ganache, I'm going to whip for just a minute or two with the hand mixer to make sure everything is well mixed. Then we'll cover with saran wrap and chill for two hours. Now it's time to measure our ingredients for our macarons. Let's start with the egg whites. We want 90 grams of egg whites and this will come from approximately three large eggs. Then we need to measure 90 grams of granulated sugar. I'm going to be using an optional ingredient, dried egg white powder. I'm going to combine four grams of this powder to the granulated sugar. This helps to stabilize your meringue and makes your shells fuller. I like to mix together with the spoon and just make sure the sugar and the egg white powder is well combined. Now we need 95 grams of almond flour and I like to go ahead and pour into the sifter. Then add 95 grams of powdered sugar. I like to use a whisk and combine the almond flour and powdered sugar together as it's going through the sifter. Make sure to discard any large pieces that will not go through the sifter. Then I'll use the whisk one more time to make sure the powdered sugar and almond flour are well combined. Now let's make the meringue. You want to start with a pot of barely simmering water. Place your egg whites on top of this pot and pour your sugar into your egg whites. Begin to stir and combine your egg whites and your granulated sugar. After just one or two minutes, check your egg white mixture for any sugar grains. The goal here is to make sure all the sugar is melted. Once you no longer feel any sugar, we can then start using either a stand mixer or hand mixer to mix the meringue. I'm gonna start by turning the mixer on the low speed for about 30 seconds. And then I'll increase the speed slowly up to the speed of eight. Once my meringue has that glossy look, I start adding my color. Today I'm gonna to be experimenting with different colors to get a deep green color. This is an experiment, so it may take a few tries. I'm starting with a few drops of yellow and a few drops of a navy blue. I can tell right away that this is not the green I'm looking for. This is more of a muted, leafy green color. I want a deeper green. So now I'm going to add a touch of brown to see what this will do. 
I'm adding a couple more drops of blue as well as yellow. This is still not the color that I'm looking for. So I'm going to add some additional drops of a teal blue-green color to see if I can help pull out that rich green. Let's check the stiffness of our meringue. We have points, but I can see the very tip of this point is bending over slightly. I think we can go a little bit further. And I'm going to add an additional drop or two of the teal green to get that rich green color. I'm slowly increasing the speed back to an 8. This won't take long because we're really close to stiff peaks. Let's check again. Yes, these are straight pointy peaks. This is exactly what we're looking for in our stiff peak moraine. Even the peaks in the bowl are straight. Now let's add our meringue to our dry ingredients and mix until well combined. Now that the mixture is well combined, let's start the deflating process. This is the macronage stage. I'm pressing the batter up against the side of the bowl and using quarter turns. Our goal is to get our batter to that ribbon-like stage. Let's check the consistency. We should be able to make two to three figure eights. Once we reach this stage, we should stop. Now let's transfer our batter to a piping bag. Today I'm going to be using a round tip number 12, and I'm, going, I'm using a one and a half inch circle template. If you'd like this template, you can download it for free. I have a link in the description below. Pipe your shells using even pressure and hold your bag at a 90 degree angle. Remove your template and bang your tray to release the air bubbles. If you have any remaining air bubbles, you can use a scribe or a toothpick to pop. Now it's time to let your shells rest. This can take anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour. Once they've rested, you should be able to rub your finger over top of the shell and no batter should come off on your finger. Now let's put in the oven. Today I'm baking at 300 degrees for 15 minutes. Let's take a peek inside a shell. We want to see if they are full. And as you can see, these are full shells. Since it's St. Patrick's Day, let's add a touch of gold for good luck. I'm using gold luster dust and I've just used a drop of vodka to mix together and I'm using a paintbrush to just put a stroke over top of the shell. Continue with the tops of the rest of your shells and let them dry. Now let's get our ganache from the refrigerator and whip with the hand mixer until nice and creamy. Today I'm using a star tip 32 to pipe the filling. After you've paired your shells in a range, let's start piping our filling. I'm just doing a simple swirl. Again, this is a star tip 32. Here's a closer look one more time. Using a simple swirl, pair your shells and look how beautiful. Now put the tops on your macarons and it's time to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and while you're here, make sure to watch this other macaron video. Have a wonderful and blessed day.